It's Valley City's version of Sandbag Central, with a few unfamiliar faces, according to the locals. That's Sam McDermott, a grad student who's come all the way from Columbia, South Carolina, to pitch in. I read about uh, some flooding in Fargo, and uh, so I went to Fargo to ask if they needed help, and they said they're doing uh, pretty well there, and there's a little town uh, about 60 miles west that uh, really needed some hands. So. The city. The city lost three quarters of its reserve supply of sandbags because of two major breaches in the dike system over the last 48 hours. One here at the country club. We've never had dikes like this. We've never had water like this. And so the concern all the way through is the integrity of the dikes all the way through Valley City. The only way in or out of Jean and Jackie Colville's home is by boat. This is the driveway, yeah. The entire yard is hidden by several feet of water. These fish in the front yard were nailed to these trees five feet from the ground. Jean expects them to be swimming soon. They're flood fish. <laughs> the water is already pushing halfway up the four-foot dike around the home, and it's seeping through the nearly 15,000 sandbags. It's kind of scary. It's a little. Once we got everything under control, it's. It's easier, but it's still scary. You don't know what's going to happen. Some Cass County homeowners cut off by the rising Cheyenne River say they will stay and fight no matter what. County leaders are keeping a close eye on the water uh, north of West Fargo. Storm systems could wreck the already tenuous triumph of homeowners' dikes against the flood. And some experts say the Cheyenne might not come down for another three weeks. Many parts of 19th Avenue North off of County Road 17 are washed out leaving people no choice but to travel by boat or drive if their vehicle is tall enough. This is one of the few roads that takes people to their homes, but it's a gravel road and it's giving out fast. Now, a look at what we expect to happen over the next seven days. Temperatures, look at this, hovering near that 60 degree mark, but look at the raindrops in the forecast. They start late on Tuesday into Thursday, moderate to heavy rain possible, and again on Friday, this will affect our river. So our forecasts right now do not include the amount of rainfall because we just don't know exactly how much or exactly where it's going to fall. That will be Earlier yesterday, water from the Cheyenne River started to seep through the dike onto the southwest part of town. It happened about 6.15 a.m. along the softball complex at VCSU. No homes were flooded and the streets are still dry. Governor Hoven met with the mayor of Valley City to evaluate the situation and make sure the town has enough crews and equipment to handle the repairs. Well, it's not only making sure they have the equipment, that we have the people so that we're monitoring the dikes, we're responding if there's a problem, the equipment to fix the breaches, but then also help with uh, law enforcement, traffic control. As you know, here in Valley City, they're very short of bridges. They're down to just a couple of bridges, so we're going to see if there's anything we can do in that regard to help. County. An evacuation order is still in effect for people living in low-lying areas along the James River. These pictures of the James River sent by Gene Hansen show water surrounding homes and farmsteads. The river is rising rapidly, and while the order is voluntary, people living in the area are urged to consider their options. Anyone in that area who doesn't have a place to evacuate to is asked to call the Emergency Management Department at 701-883-5301, extension 236. The North Dakota Highway Patrol closed I-94 from Bismarck to Jamestown overnight because of flooding. And get ready for delays if you're driving west on I-94 toward Valley City. There's water over both lanes of the interstate from Tower City to Ariska's exits. And a look at Valley City as the uh, river climbs up the side of those dikes. And, uh, well, along with all of us here in the region, we are praying that they hold. Yes, certainly. Boy, yeah. People so many, around here have been through a lot, haven't they? So many towns, so many communities, yeah. and overland flooding just uh, in so many locations, it's hard to uh, really keep up with and watch them. They've lived here for 46 years, and for the Andersons, this flood fight may be their last memory of home. We first noticed that the dike looked like it was missing something. We just uh, we couldn't keep up, and the water kept on coming in. So instead... It's the fourth breach in the levees in less than 40 hours as the Cheyenne River tries to swallow much of Valley City. Almost half of all the city's homes are in the evacuation zone. The city is up in arms to fight off the water. Schwarzkopf says originally the Corps only gave them until Saturday to fill 180,000 bags. 
He says they've now extended that until Monday, and because they're building some clay dikes, the city should only need about 110,000 bags. Despite all it's up against, Sutsman County Administrator Noel Johnson says Jamestown is fortunate. So we're lucky we have those uh, dams in place because we can manage the flows at this, you know, right now and we can prepare for it. Not like some of our sister cities are just having a terrible time. We've been lucky. Like I said, it's controlled chaos at this point. At least it's controlled. Weather Service is again backing off on his prediction for the Red River Crest in Fargo-Moorhead. Here's a live look at the river at Dyke West in downtown Fargo. The Weather Service now says the red should crest at 37 feet instead of 38 feet on Saturday. And as Hutch said right now, it's just over 33 feet. Great news for flood fighters in the Fargo-Moorhead area. The National Weather Service is lowering its estimate of the second crest to 37 feet. It's projected to arrive by Saturday morning. The river now is at 33.4 feet. Earlier, the National Weather Service said the second crest would be 38 to 39 feet. They have been asked to leave the city. Some are going while some are staying. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. It was a decision that was difficult, but not surprising. The mayor of Valley City asked more than half of the city to evacuate their homes today due to flooding danger. And that included vulnerable people, elderly, children and vulnerable adults and anyone living in the floodplain. Effort here. 75 players and several coaches as well spent the day emptying the library at Valley City State University. Coach Some Craig Bull says it's the least they can do to help out a sister university. You know, so many people have helped out Fargo-Moorhead. It's an opportunity for us uh, to help out other communities. Um, the libraries are so important to an institution. Uh, this is heavy work. And uh, you know what? Our guys really uh, took the challenge. We certainly appreciate their effort. They're doing a hell of a lot better than the coach is.